Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I know it's been a while. I sort of took a small break and also really got busy with life again. You know how it is. All the excuses that I shouldn't be having. But anyways, we were doing Hasbro Hotel tier list, which is a video I'm very excited for because I always want to do a Hasbro Hotel video. And I never get the chance to because life just kicking me down and there's nothing to really make it there about this goddamn game. Bec not game, fucking show. But there's nothing to make about it because there, there's just no game on it. There's no nothing. I can't make a reaction out of it. Especially the copyright avoidance and I watched it by myself. Uh, Charlie, the main character, as you all know. Fantastic. Honestly, it's good, but I see how she gets annoying and be the Disney princess, style and all. Also, I know that Christians aren't going to be too happy with this video, but who cares, right? This is our channel, we do what we want. Next, we got Alistair. I'm sorry, fuck you, every single one of you that don't like it. He is my favorite counter, and I absolutely love the crap out of him. This might be biased. I see how some problems with it, but I don't care. Alistair's amazing. Next we got Angel Dust, a beloved character, but it's a bit of a horror bug, like it says in episode 2, and he kind of had good development in episode 4 with Valentino over here, also you notice there's this much bigger and spacious here, because I got rid of the ads, thanks to this Opera GX, getting rid of ad blockers, well not ad blockers, but get rid of ads with the ad blocker. And I'm going to be, but anyways, Angel Dust, it's good, but some people might not like it. It has a con, con, it has a relation with sexual abuse and all that, and all the terrible working conditions of the porn industry and all that. So I get why you guys might not like it, but anyways, I personally love that character. Husk, he's my boy, bro, but he's also kind of a furry, so... And we know how most people feel about furries, plus he is kind of whatever monotone. People hate the voice actorship. I personally love it. And Sir Pentius, I wanted this dude dead. It's average because I hated the crap out of this dude in the pilot in episode 2. He showed character development and I absolutely love him. If we're ready Sir Pentius after he gets into heaven, he would be an A. He had an amazing character growth, he, growth, he, growth, and he constantly wants to be good, but was unable to. Next, we got the Egg Boys. They're all kind of group up together, and because of that, I'm going to add it here. Frank is, might make it an average, but the other ones, they're just kind of fodder. There's nothing to really say about the Eggy Boys. Next, we have Vaggy. She was kind of controversial with her, with her anger issues in the pilot, but that's kind of fixed. And she is an amazing character. Amazing. Adds so much to the story. Being a fallen angel. Spoilers, by the way. I don't know if you clicked on this for no spoilers, but it has been hotel review. What the fuck do you expect? A fucking tier list? And go and not get spoilers? Absolutely love Faggy. Next we got Nifty. She's hilarious, but she's kind of... Doesn't really fit the purpose of the show at all. And shouldn't really be in the hotel... And kind of doesn't really add too much. She's most like an overlord like Husk. But like. She needs better story in season 2. Next we got some of the villains here. We got Fox. Appears in episode 2. Absolutely love him. And he, he's good. But some people might not like him. Because of his petty. Destructive. Manipulative. Just all the insults in the world. And he's a bit annoying. But he's entertaining. He gives a good threat, and he's the opposite to Alistair, which is my boy. Next, we got Adam, the Dick Master. Amazing character. Fantastic. I loved how he had no growth. I absolutely loved it. No sarcasm. I actually loved this character. Even though he was an annoying asshole, but he was an entertaining asshole what people fail to realize. And anyways, I'm rating Adam in S tier. He's kind of perfect. He feels much like Eric Cartman. He's meant to get the viewer upset. He's meant to get you riled up. And he's always funny. His scenes is perfect. 
Sorry, y'all. I am, in fact, back. I apologize for that. But something happened in the background. I don't know how much got cut off. But all I was saying, Adam the best. Fantastic song. He's the perfect Eric Cartman villain you want in a show. Next, we got his attendant, Luke. Uh, this character, I fucking love. But she doesn't really add much. I believe she has a ton of potential with Vaggy. Of, like, their rivalry with each other. Losing that arm. The deal with Lilith. Oh, like, she has so much potential. And we're only scratching the surface of what we'll see with her. Next, we got Velvet. And I fucking love Velvet. Probably my favorite V. But I get why it had its problems. He's like a hip hop fashion fucking person. But she is fucking amazing. I just fucking love Velvet. This shit. His Velvet stays. Probably cut out a lot there. But anyways, Velvet is amazing. I was brain farting because I'm fucking stupid out here. But Velvet is the pop star that you want in your thing. She's powerful, she's controllative, she could command a whole army to go to hell, like, bro, she was convincing me to go to war against heaven, even though that was bad, and the other characters are right about their needing more intelligence at the very least, but honestly, she's very entertaining, but you got the problems with the fashion and being a hot-headed person. Next, I'm gonna do Val uh, Valentino, because he's the next one. This might be controversial... But he's not a bad character. He does what he needs to do in the story. To tackle Angel Dust's perfectly good, like, sexual abuse victim story, or and physical abuse, you need a character that's that bad. And he is perfect. The pimping kind of fits his style with his character. The design is perfect for the character he's trying to play. The moth is really unique, his powers seem very unique, and just unexpected, and he's kind of good. Obviously, like, he has all the problems with all the shit he does, and he's not, like, entertaining like Adam. So, yeah, probably gonna get a lot of flack for that, but that's what I believe. Next, I'm just gonna throw this overlord in the worst, because we don't know the, anything about this fuck. This, he doesn't do anything for the show. Next is the Angel, F. A plot device, very good plot device, but the Angel does not fucking matter. Uh, next I'm gonna do this dude, buff dude. He appears like episode 2, helps with the filming in episode 1. He's just kind of there, but he's not really useful. I'm gonna do... Ooh, who's next? Zexel. Let's do Zestiel. I love him. I love him. He's creepy. He's powerful. I'm pretty sure he's even more powerful than possibly Alistair. He is so fearful that he never appears in the mortal realm, but he manifests just for the meeting, and he has that immense power. If he'd been long, if he'd been here this long without dying, that is true power. Alistair permanently got rid of overlords, and I'm sure others would have access to angelic powers. Cause I don't think it's the angelic weapons that 100% do it. I think it's just because of angelic powers. Because Lucifer hurt them. The whole thing was they couldn't be hurt, but Lucifer hurt them. And Charlie was able to make a pitchfork that wasn't an angelic weapon that she got from Carmine. She spawned that in. And it cut Adam's wings. So it proves that it's more the angelic energy since she's 50% angel. But Zestiel is... So powerful be being along. He's interesting with his dialogue. He fits a good story. I think he is an A character. I say that he stands along with them. Next, let's do uh, Carmine. Let's do her next. She is the perfect parallel to Vaggy. If you want a character to fucking love, she's your guy. The angelic weapons are gotta be a deal. Or people theorize that she's part angel because she has children i think they either died or maybe demons can really pre-produce without like angels but i don't feel her as an angel because it doesn't make sense obviously like it's amazing she doesn't kill she tries her best to protect her family she is incredibly powerful barely scrapped the surface the only one that killed angel i know she had an angel weapon but it's not butter she outskilled them 
found their weakness. Honestly, she's in A. Next, let's do Rosie. She had a uh, B. She had a very powerful episode 7 appearance. She made Glimpse in 4, only really had a full appearance in 7, and made me absolutely love the character. Like, a cannibal is fucking amazing. And she tr genuinely seems like a good person. She might have killed her husband in Extermination, if you all believe that theory. But anyways, she is amazing. Next, I'm going to do Susan. Love the crap out of her. I don't give a fuck what you guys say. She's entertaining as fuck. Bring Rosie back. She's just kind of there. She's she kind of spitting facts. Charlie had no place there. She brought them to death. And she was always entertaining. It was not a scene where I wasn't laughing at her. She's honestly the perfect Karen character without going like full like, oh no, it's a Karen. She's the perfect representation of that. Next, I'm going to throw in the kill, uh, Katie Killjoy. I like her. She's funny, but she doesn't really have a purpose in the physical show itself. And Tucker, also, the epi also this is the only voice I will say is better than the pilot. But Tucker, he's an F. He's just kind of there. I feel bad for him. But he's just kind of there. Next, we got Fat Nuggets. The average kind of didn't really do anything in the story. I'll just add Razzle and Dazzle. It's Razzle kind of brings it down because Dazzle's death was amazing. Honestly, it might have made him be. It was powerful. It showed the heat of the battle, showed that there was casualties in these wars, and led to the loot and Vaggy fight where loot lost her arm. Crazy as shit. Next, we got Cherry Bomb. Appeared in the pilot in the Attic song, and she's hilarious and reminds me of quite a few people. Hot headed. Honestly, she's a good B. Even though she only made subtlest appearances in episode 8 and episode uh, 6, she honestly is entertaining when she's on the screen and seems like a permanent stay and will make a huge impact in season 2. Next, I'm going to do Lilith. We don't really know enough about her to really judge her too well. I like what they're setting up with her, but it's all just theories and everything. Also, this furry, uh, like, fucking thing adds nothing to the story in the meeting, just like that, dude. Lucifer, I fucking love him. I, I didn't think I loved him. When I look at his design, I didn't know who he was, but I thought his design was terrible. But it fits him so well when I watched the show. Because I saw a clip of people drawing Alistair and Lucifer beside each other. He's honestly amazing dad character that's really inspiring he's not a bad dad but he's not a good dad he tries but he is terrible and not the best and next we have i'm just saying this is fucking amazing and he's always gonna see and it seems like he's gonna make an impact on things next we're gonna do mizzy which appeared she kind of did nothing for the story she was a plot device real quick really didn't care about her i'll toss the children here because they kind of added nothing to the story with Carmilla. Carmilla's the mother, which adds to her story, but doesn't add to their story. I'm going to get a lot of dialogue with them. Other than that he sh Maybe he should know. Next on that thing, you didn't know shit. Let's get St. Peter out of here. I really like him. Emily. Fucking love her, bro. She is Charlie in the... Heaven and does really well, and I really kind of hope she turns to a fallen angel. Next is our last controversial opinion Sarah. I'm sorry, y'all, you all misjudge her. She's honestly a good fucking character that deserves a lot of shit. She feels justified. If I was in her shoes, as Charlie said herself, she was inspiring sinners to rise up. Episode one. And she had a power working voice. If all these guys were working together, they could be a really fuck force. Like, we already see how strong Alistair, Vox, Valentino, Zestio. Imagine a bunch of them working together. And they were only going to get stronger in numbers. And honestly, being worried for your own kind is kind of what you got to do. It's kind of like war now. Like, even though it's bad, we got it. Sometimes it's got to do with to protect your family and loved ones. And she speaks to me as a mother. I'm not a mother, but like, mother rules feel really good to listen to. And she's like a 
she feels like Carmine, but like she's on the opposing side. But she is really, really actually trying. And it seems like she doesn't want to send Emily down, but it's going to have to season two. Anyway, that's my list. A bit controversial and a bit different. I know I paused a lot. I'm going to probably have to edit that shit out. But anyways, I'm sorry for not posting too often. And adios, my amigos. See you all in the next one. Goodbye.